Christopher Bond, uh, director of Evil Dead the Musical and also Night of the Living Dead Live. And we're also here with Nug, likes to be called Nug, uh, who was, what was your, ca uh, your character in uh, Evil Dead? Uh, when I did Evil Dead, my name was uh, Jake, good old reliable good Jake. Good old reliable Jake. And in Night of the Living Dead, you play? I play the part of Harry Cooper, the jackass that's in the basement. Let's go go down to the cellar, that that's guy, right, right yeah. on. It is so, the safest place. It is the safest place. <laughs> So uh, the reason this is really exciting for us at RGB Filter is because we just learned that Evil Dead the Musical and Night of the Living Dead Live are coming back. Yeah, it's exciting. Both shows this fall. Uh, Evil Dead's going to be touring, but uh, Night of the Living Dead is going to play first uh, at the Theatre Pass Mirai, and then Evil Dead shows up right at the end of October at the Randolph Theatre. So it's going to be an exciting fall for everybody. Yeah, there's going to be a week uh, near the end of October where uh, both shows are running at the same time and the zombie walk is happening. So it's going to be a real dead time in Toronto for a week. <laughs> You should talk to uh, somebody named Taya Munster, see what you guys can uh, hook well, up I'm with her. I'm pretty sure Taya's going to be coming to both shows. I have so. a feeling she'll be front row center every single night. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so you're directing both shows? Yeah. Simultaneously? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, because you just like you take the easy path in life, apparently. Sure. Well, you know, I've done Evil Dead a couple times. This is my eighth, eighth time I've directed the show. And uh, we just did Night of Living Dead Live, and we're coming back with mostly the same cast, so... And we're able to do it, hit the ground running, and do both shows at the same time. And quite honestly, the uh, the schedule, it, they're just they're like this. There's a little bit of layover, but we got rehearsals and rehearsals and then. Eh. Yeah, so, but we don't listen to you anymore. <laughs> so the, directing Night of the Living Dead Live isn't going to be a problem. See, when you have comedians as your cast, all stand-up, uh, improv dudes, yeah, they don't listen. They just uh, they're like, I got a joke, and we're going to make the joke happen. Uh, but it but usually you know, works out. It does, it does. It, they're funny, they're funny as hell, and that's what we want at Night of the Living Dead Live. And we have a fantastic cast of Second City peeps, uh, and Nug has been sensational, and the fans are going bonkers for him. Oh, yeah, thanks, well, we've, uh, we've all seen both shows a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always an incredible time, so if you haven't seen it, make sure you check them out. Theater Pass Mariah and the other theater you mentioned was? The Randolph Theater, formerly the Bathurst Street Theater, and we're opening October the 24th. And, yeah, for Evil Dead, Evil and Dead. Night of the Living Dead opens October 5th, runs to the 27th. And you guys, I think we're buying tickets right now. Our friend is over there buying tickets for the oh, Halloween right show. Yeah, so yeah, uh, October tickets. 31st, I know where we're going to be. Oh, yeah. So, absolute pleasure to meet you guys both. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. All right. All Thanks, right. guys. Take care. Hey, everybody. Once again, we're here at Fan Expo 2012, and I have the unique and distinct privilege of standing in right in between, literally in between, some of uh, some people you've definitely heard about. I'm standing here to my right is Mr. Russ Steiner. To my left is Chris Harrison. <laughs> Chris Harrison. Sorry about that. Of course, is John Russo right here, and Phil Pattison. And Phil Pattison here. Uh, and we are standing here talking about Night of the Living Dead Live. And I think I'm just going to start by asking you to describe what Night of the Living Dead Live really is. Well, Night of the Living Dead Live is an idea that Phil and I came up with talking to after seeing a picture of a friend who had come to a Halloween party as a black and white zombie from the film. Due to the fact that it takes place in a farmhouse, we thought it might be a good way to tell the story on stage, seeing as it would be one setting and if it was all black and white, it would be really creative. And we were huge fans of Evil Dead the Musical. so. And being huge fans of Night of the Living Dead, we never had the intention of maybe doing a remake, which a lot of people have done, but we wanted to do a different take on it and decided and came up with a stage adaptation of Night of the Living Dead. So we went ahead and we, uh, we wrote two different drafts of it, and as things started to move, we got to talk to Russ and John and met them last year at the Fan Expo last year, told them about our idea, sent them the scripts, and things sort of got moving from there. And, I'll let Russ... Yeah, that's that's actually an amazing story. I love when stuff like that just sort of comes together and it's yeah. fantastic. Of course, you're no stranger to the Living Dead. You're one of the most quoted people in all of zombie movies with that <laughs> amazing line. What line would that be? Oh, that would be, they're coming for you, Barbara. You do it pretty I well. I do it pretty actually. well, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. So, but we, like, were, we, were, we were appreciative of the fact, when I say we, I mean myself, John Russo, and George Romero were appreciative of the fact that these guys did the right thing. They knew that we held the rights to it and they wanted to get in touch with us and do the right thing. And it's always a pleasure and it's always reflect, refreshing to do business with honorable people. So one thing led to another. We started our conversations. Uh, George uh, heard, uh, along with uh, John Russo, heard what the ideas were. We liked the ideas. 
and so that's when conversations heated up and we ended up this is the first time ever anywhere that the Night of the Living Dead crew has authorized a transition to uh, the stage, That's the Night of, Night of the Living Dead Live. That's fantastic. So with roots like that, I mean, it's obvious that something like this is going to do incredibly well, right? With you behind it, and of course with you behind it also being, you know, part of the Light, Night of the Living Dead legacy, right? Thank you. I'm happy to be working on it. And what we see in this group, and Phil and Chris and uh, Chris Bond and the writing team, uh, Dale and Trevor, what we see in these people is the same kind of zeal and enthusiasm and integrity that we as a group had when we made the original Night of the Living Dead. And those things are really important to us and they're, they're not just um, hucksters and entrepreneurs but they're artists and we like working with other artists and it's been a pleasure working with these people. That's fantastic. One of the things at our site, RGB Filter, uh, that we that we really do seek out is people who are really interested in making real content, content creators, people who are doing it for the passion and the art. And it sounds like all of you are, are on that page. Like, um, how, how, did, how did this really come to, come to being for you? Well, uh, like Chris was saying, um, I don't know if you explained the photograph or not to you, but there was a photograph of a friend of ours who went out for Halloween as a zombie. The photograph was colored, but he was black and white. And I asked him, is that Photoshop? And he's like, no, no, no. Chris saw the photo, and instantly the idea came to him to do the stage play. Why, why don't we do Night of the Living Dead on stage, black and white? It's working in this photograph. Why wouldn't it work for real? So that's basically how it kind of came about. So Chris and I just started developing the idea. And uh, like, he, like Russ was saying, we did the right thing. We did not want to uh, proceed with the project without bringing George, Russ, and John on board because over the years, um, I think they've been taken advantage of it, it, as far as their film is concerned. Us being filmmakers, we would hate that to happen to us and being big fans and just, they're our heroes. We want to make sure that they're taken care of and it would not be what it is today and it won't be what it is in the future once the thing gets going without these guys. So, so when you mention George, of course, you mean George Romero. And uh, it's uh, I, we talked a little bit about his involvement and how he got involved in the entire project. But if there are any more details you're allowed to share, uh, uh, I'll any, let Russ. Russ, talk about, talk about George. Uh, well, uh, George is completely supportive of this effort. And to be honest right. with you, there wasn't any big back and forth about it. We had confidence and we had the feeling that these guys were really involved on an organic level to do the right thing. And so the George, uh, John and myself were almost in instant agreement that we should move ahead with this and we have and we're really happy uh, with it. So our, from the original film team, we're totally supporting this effort. That's a fantastic story, I like hearing that. Uh, when can I buy my ticket? Um, Give me 20 bucks. 20. <laughs> <laughs> I work for a little website, I don't have 20 bucks. <laughs> Guys, I wish you all the luck in the world. I actually can't wait to see it. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Thank and you. again, and thank you. Thank you very much.